Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 5th of April and the weekly market update. Well, we're, we're a few days into Q2 and the likelihood is, given the price action of the last few days, that the price action that we saw in Q1, we could well see a repeat of it in Q2. Now, last week I looked at the strength of the dollar and specifically I looked at the dollar yen. That was one of the first charts that I looked at and suggested that potent there was significant potential for further downside. Now since then, um, the dollar has in fact weakened against the yen, less so against the euro, and even less so against the pound. That being said, I think what we have seen over the past week or so is a clear direction of travel with respect to the dollar. And I think that does have consequences for risk appetite in general, particularly against the yen. The yen generally tends to get bought when risk aversion is very high. And we're certainly seeing that in the context of equity markets. Equity markets are pushing lower. Commodity prices are starting to come off as well from their peaks that we saw in March. And I think that does have significant um, consequences for equities in general, because I think if the yen continues to strengthen, that will also weigh down the Nikkei 225, and it will make it that much more difficult for equity markets globally to rally as well. And in that context, I'm going to be looking at the dollar yen again, but also euro yen, where we've seen a significant bearish daily reversal, and also looking at the gold price on the basis of the fact that we could actually be on the cusp of a potential move higher. So I'm going to make a start with the gold price for want of a better place to begin. Looking at a four hourly chart up here on my right, and your left as you look at it. And I've drawn a line, a trend line, from the highs at the beginning of March. And that currently comes in just above the 1235, 1240 area. Now we've posted a double support level just below 1210, around about 1205. And while that key support level holds, then I think there is a reasonable expectation to presume that we could well see a push through that resistance level back towards the levels that we saw in the middle of, the mo middle of March, back towards 1260, 1270, and 1280. So we're gonna revisit the chart that I looked at last week, namely the dollar yen chart on a daily chart. And as can be seen from this chart here, we've, the price action has moved back to the bottom of the down channel. I think more importantly, it found resistance just above 113.80, just below 114, but also, there is a nice little indicator on this particular chart called the Ichimoku chart, or the cloud charts. Ichimoku is Japanese, it means a one look. And I'm going to explain a little bit about why I use this particular indicator, particularly on yen denominated charts, um, simply because I think they can be very, very useful at um, showing or identifying particular turning points or breakout points. So this Euro Yen chart is really it's a really interesting daily chart. First and foremost, the Ichimoku cloud chart has acted as a really nice area of resistance over the course of the past six months. We can see it here all the way along the top. The price action has pushed up against it on a number of occasions, hasn't been able to break through it. Now, the cloud chart acts as a type of moving average, and it, does, it can act very, very nicely as a significant area of support or resistance. Now in this case, it's acted as resistance, but also last week we saw a bearish engulfing day on the daily charts, which is a decent indicator that potentially we could have seen a peak in Euro Yen. Since that peak at the end of last week, we've declined sharply lower. We've broken the support line from the lows that we saw at the beginning of March, and the oscillator is starting to turn over and looking particularly negative. Now that can mean one of two things. It can either mean that the euro dollar is in line for a significant push lower, or it can mean that dollar yen is in line for a significant push lower. Certainly one of those, one of those particular foreign exchange asset classes is going to have to push significantly lower to push or pull euro yen down. But certainly the indicators here over the course of the last six months would appear to suggest that the downtrend in Euro Yen is now starting to gain a little bit of traction. How we get there? 
doesn't really matter, but what it does mean that it's significantly unlikely that either euro dollar or dollar yen is probably going to rally significantly over the course of the next few days. To sum all of that up, I'm going to show you a couple of slides on how Ichimoku works, and they are currently on the screen as I'm talking. Now, let's first and foremost look at the general theory. If the price action is above the cloud, the overall trend is bullish. If it's below the cloud, the overall trend is bearish. It's commonly, it was commonly used in Japanese trading rooms, but it's become much more commonplace nowadays in modern day technical analysis. And the cloud is composed of two Senko span or Kumo lines, A and B or one and two. Now these are pushed forward in time, and when the area between them is shaded in, it makes a cloud-like shape. They can be used in one of three ways. They can be used to establish a trend for an asset. They can be used to detect trend breakouts. And they can also work in range-bound markets. But you do need to exercise an awful lot of care. Furthermore, the cloud can act as support and resistance levels in equal measure. So when you break above the cloud, it, that cloud then becomes a support level. If you break below the cloud, that cloud level becomes a resistance level. So I think in that context, these cloud lines can act as very useful supplementary indicators to your overall trading strategy. And I think in that context, it's very, very important. But remember also that cloud has a thickness level as well. So when the two lines are very close together, that those two lines or the cloud in between can act as a support or resistance level, which means that it's not a single figure, it can actually be a potentially a 50 or 60 point range. So that's it for this week's weekly market update. If you have any questions whatsoever on any of the stuff that we covered with respect to the Ichimoku, please drop me a line. You can find me on Twitter at mhewson underscore cmc. Otherwise, that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.